Hello, this is, this is Elder Todd Nance, and I'm so glad to be here today to bring the word of the Lord to you. Um, I'm excited about some things that I feel like the Lord has been talking to me about, and I want to share them with you today. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take you to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, a very familiar passage of scripture. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And I want to talk to you today about all things work together. One of the beautiful things about the God that we serve is he is able to enlist every situation and every circumstance into his service. And I love the fact that God in his, in his wisdom and, and, and the anointing and the way that he orchestrates everything, he makes every event and he makes every player be a part of the plan of God. Um, there's a, there's a story that I heard uh, from a Jewish rabbi that uh, is illustrative of what I'm talking about. And, and it goes like this. There once was a farmer who owned a horse. One day the horse ran away. All the people in town came to console him because of the loss. Oh, I don't know, said the farmer. Maybe it's a bad thing and maybe it's not. A few days later, the horse returned to the farm, accompanied by 20 other horses. Apparently, he had found some wild horses and made friends. All the townspeople came to congratulate him. Now you have a stable full of horses. Oh, I don't know, said the farmer. Maybe it's a good thing, and maybe it's not. A few days later, the farmer's son was out riding one of the new horses. The horse got wild and threw him off, breaking the son's leg. All the people in town came to console the farmer because of the accident. Oh, I don't know, said the farmer. Maybe it's a bad thing, and maybe it's not. A few days later, the government declared war and instituted a draft of all the able-bodied young men. They came to the town and carted off hundreds of young men except for the farmer's son who had a broken leg. Now I know, said the farmer, that it was a good thing my horse ran away. And when you think about that, it's like so many things happen to us. And the first thing is sometimes we ask is, why me? Why did this happen to me? Or why do I have to put up with this? And it could simply be um, that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And God chooses to take events in our lives to move us, to move us into situations where we could be more fruitful for the kingdom of God and to see things take place for the, for the big picture, for what God's wanting to do. Um, a, good, a good way to think about this is the life of Joseph. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I love the study about him. But if you look at Joseph's life, it looks like he goes from, it's a roller coaster where he's, he's a success, then he's a failure, then he's a success, then he's a failure. Let me, let me track this for you. When he was born, he was dad's favorite. And there's a lot of reasons I could go into that we don't have time to explain that. He was dad's favorite because his mother was his favorite wife. And so the dad favored him. Of course, when you favor one child and the other brothers are going to be jealous. Uh, so he gives him a coat in many colors. Some translation of the Bible say it was a coat with long sleeves. The whole point of it was that he was recognizing Joseph to be the head of the family. So that when he passed, he was going to pass over all of his brothers and make Joseph the head of the family. Well, that didn't help the, that didn't help the jealousy factor at all. Then to add to the mix, Joseph started having these dreams about his future and how wonderful his future was going to be. He had a dream about these sheaves. He was out in the field and they were binding sheaves and all the other sheaves bowed down to his sheave. And then he also had a dream about the sun and the moon and the 11 stars and how that they bowed down to Joseph. And it kind of irritated dad a little bit, ruffled his feather. And he said, am I going to worship you? Am I going to, is there going to be a time when I'm going to bow down to you? And David, or not David, but Jeremiah, or not Jeremiah. Um, let me get this right. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph uh, kept these in his heart. And so when, and he needed these, he needed, God knew that he needed something like the dreams to keep him in the time to come. Jealousy moved these brothers to sell him as a slave. They sold him like, like a common slave uh, to the Ishmaelites. They carried him down into Egypt. And it was there that Potiphar, Potiphar, who was the Pharaoh's um, uh, 
uh, right-hand man bought him, brought him into his house. The beautiful thing about Joseph is even when he was on the downward slide, he didn't lose his integrity with God. He kept his integrity with God. So even, now this is one of the things that we need to remember. When bad things happen and things go against us, we still have to keep our integrity because the story's not finished yet. And we've got to understand that God, God is orchestrating. He's going to use this somehow, this bad thing that has happened to me or this situation that's going on right now, God is going to somehow use this to put me where I'm most fruitful. Uh, well, in Potiphar's house, you know the story. If you read your Bible, he rose to the top. He was in charge of everything. Um, he, he ran the household. Um, he, he even makes a statement that Potiphar put everything under his control. Uh, the only thing that was not under his control was Potiphar's wife. And the devil used that to try to get to Joseph. Um, and without going into that story, she made a play for him. And he had to walk out of his garment to get away from her. Um, but he kept his integrity. And because of that, he ended up in another prison. And in the prison, Potiphar put him in a prison. And I really think, this is, this is my opinion, but I think Potiphar didn't believe his wife. And that's why he didn't kill him, and instead he put him in a prison. But in the prison, instead of, instead of sitting down and pouting, and, and I'm sure he had his sad days, and I'm sure he shed some tears, and, and I'm sure that he felt like everybody had forgot about him. But in the prison, he rose to the top again. You see, there's something about a child of God. It doesn't matter what happens to them. Their best is going to come out and they are going to shine. And I really feel like the situation that we're in right now uh, with the coronavirus and everything that's happening, the constraints that's been put on the church and the people of God, these are not going to cripple the church. These, in fact, are situating us in the places that we've never been before, or it's putting us in the places to where we haven't been effective. And now God's going to help us to use those elements to, to reach the lost and to see revival in this end time. And so when you look about this, you, you look at this, he rose to the top in the jail. And, and while he was there, there was, the, there, was the, um, there was the baker and the butler, and they had dreams that night. And in the middle, they, they come to Joseph and they said, we had these dreams last night. And, and it, you know the story, he interpreted the dreams for them. He told one, he said, in three days, Pharaoh's going to raise you up and hang you on a tree. He told another one, in three days, Pharaoh's going to raise you up and restore you to your position as, as the butler of the house. And that's exactly what happened. But the Bible says that they forgot him. Joseph said, don't forget, remember me, but the butler forgot him. So two more years, the Bible says, that Joseph spent in this, in this, um, uh, this place to where he felt like he was all alone. Nobody knew where he was at. He just felt like, but I, this is my imagination working here, but I believe that Joseph pulled out those dreams and looked at those dreams and thought about those dreams and said, God, you gave me these dreams and I know they were from you. I know that there's something to this. Two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. He had two dreams and it, nobody could interpret them for him. And the butler said, oh, I remember my sins. He said, there's a man, there's a man in the prison who interprets dreams. They called him up. You know the story. Joseph becomes the prime minister. Of, he becomes uh, only, only Pharaoh was more powerful in the land of Egypt. And not only, not only did he, not only did he um, tell the, the Pharaoh his dreams, but he had the audacity to offer him some advice. He said, you need to find a man that will put together the grain in the times of plenty and store these up so that, so that when the, these rough times hit, you're not going to be caught flat-footed. And so Pharaoh said, who, who can we find that's more wise than this man right here? And he makes Joseph, he puts Joseph in charge of all of Egypt to make that come to pass. Let me talk about a couple of things here. He never lost. Here's some things that Joseph never lost. He never lost his integrity. And what we have to remember to do is when times are bad and things are going not our way, we need to maintain our integrity. Uh, when nobody's watching, we need to maintain our integrity. When, when uh, it appears that nobody will ever know about, we need to maintain our integrity. That's what Joseph did. Think about Joseph. He had no pastor. He had no fellowship. He didn't have a prayer group. He didn't have a Bible study group. All he had was God. He had a relationship with God, and he had two dreams that he, that he held next to his heart. 
The second thing that Joseph didn't let go of is he never lost his love of dreams. And I really think that there was something about dreams, working with dreams as a child. God gave him dreams, and then the dreams in the prison, and then the dreams before Pharaoh. This was a craft that he had learned in the spirit. And in fact, uh, it was kind of his calling card. His brothers called him the dreamer. And it was the fact that he was a dreamer, that generations lived after him, and God creates a nation in the land of Egypt. So dreams... Uh, were, how, were, were the element in how God was going to use Joseph. My question to you would be, what is your calling card? And what has God given you early on in your walk with God? And what do you often, are, are you called out to work with? And are you hanging on to that? And are, is it going to be ready when it's your time to step up on the stage and deliver a word for the Lord and help somebody be delivered? Hold on to your integrity. Hold on to your dreams because your time's coming. I also want to talk to you about real quick about what he gained by losing. He gained some things by losing. When he lost his garments, he learned, he learned that, the, that respective position and, and, and the garments meant little to him. A lot of times we think if I can just have this job or if I can just have this degree or I can just have this title, it'll be something special. But that's not what makes us special before God. He also learned that it's not about circumstances, but the God of circumstances. That's what it's about. It's the God of circumstances. God, and I'm coming back to where we started, God meant it all for good. He told his brothers, he said, you meant this for evil, but God meant this for good. Oh, if we could see that picture. We could be full of forgiveness and the people who do us wrong and the people that kick us when we're down and the people that don't understand us. The day will come and, and God, God will vindicate and God will show his plan. And I just want to be there. I want to be there when God shows his plan and shows everybody all about that. He learned that forgiveness keeps us from harming ourselves and even others. Let me finish with this. Joseph ended up being one of the most Christ-like characters in the Old Testament. Um, nations are formed in a crucible, and so are great leaders. And so what I, what I want to say is, whatever it is that you're going through, we've all, it, it's not uncommon. Somebody's gone through that before. But know this. Know that God works all things for the good. doesn't mean that everything that happens to us is good. But God makes that work for our good. So whatever, whatever comes, whatever constrains us, whatever hinders us, whatever obstacles we have to walk through or around, it's all part of God's plan to resituate. Do you think, do you think the son of a shepherd would have ever had the opportunity to be the prime minister of Egypt? If he left the land and walked into the house of Pharaoh and said, I want to be your prime minister, it would have never happened. But God, by enlisting all of these circumstances and situations, moved him from a nobody to somebody to save the world and even to build a nation. I believe that I'm talking to people right now. I'm talking to people right now that you feel like you're a nobody. You feel like God's forgot about you. You feel like, you feel like that your situation is dire. I'm telling you that God is using your circumstances to put you in the right spot to be the most fruitful, to bless the kingdom of God and help us to go on into the future for revival. And I say, hold on to your integrity, hold on to your dreams, and we're going to rejoice. When that day comes, we're going to rejoice, and we're going to look back, and we're going to shout, and we're going to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for all that you did. And you are not going to want to give up any of your experiences that you've walked through in all of your life. You're going to say, thank you, Lord, for all of that. You made me who I am, and you made me to be who I am today. God bless you today. We're so thankful, amen, that we had time to bring the word of the Lord to you.